Well, greetings, church family. Today's daily Bible reading has us in Psalm 105, the 105th Psalm, Reasons to Remember Yahweh. Unknown human psalmist for this psalm, the content of the psalm narrows the possibilities for us somewhat. It must have been written after Israel took possession of Canaan, uh, judging by the words that are in this psalm. So that's either later in Joshua's life or sometime after him. In verses 1 through 6, the psalmist begins with a call to worship. He has a series of imperatives here, a series of commands calling the people of God to worship Yahweh. Kind of like when you think of a call to worship, the beginning of a Sunday morning worship service. So he gives 10 direct commands and one indirect command in these first six verses. In verse 1, there's three of these commands. Give thanks to Yahweh, call upon his name, and make known his mighty works. There's three more in verse 2. Sing to Yahweh, sing praises to the Lord, and speak of his wondrous works. And actually in Hebrew, those are two separate words used for sing, two totally different words. Well, they're related to each other, but they're very different in their spelling. One, the first, is a general singing. The second is specifically a singing that praises the object here being God. Then, verse 3, there's a direct command and an indirect command. Glory or boast in Yahweh's holy name. That's where he gets all the glory. And let rejoicing reign in the heart. That's the indirect command. And finally, in verse 4, three more commands. Seek Yahweh in his strength. Seek his face or God's good favor all the time. And remember. Now, once again, we have two separate Hebrew words used for seek. The first is an investigative seeking, making an inquiry about something. The second is more of a desiring after that which you are seeking. And the psalmist calls the physical descendants of Abraham through Jacob, as we see in verse 6, to remember two major aspects about the Lord. One is his wonders or marvels, what he has done. And two is his judgments, what he has said or uttered. And this is actually the first of five times that the psalmist directly refers to the word of God in this psalm. We see it in verses 5, 8, 19, 42, and 45. And the rest of the psalm are two pieces of evidence, reasons why God's people are to remember him. So we get God's initial faithfulness in verses 7 through 24 and God's continued faithfulness in verses 25 through 45. They're both related to the giving and partial fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant. So the psalmist's first evidence given to prove why God's people should remember the Lord is the faithfulness of Yahweh to initially fulfill the Abrahamic covenant in the lives of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he puts this as God, verse 8, remembering his covenant forever, the word which he commanded. He rightly mentions Abraham. Isaac and Jacob as those to whom the covenant was given and repeated to. And this initial fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant is detailed by the psalmist as God giving Abraham many descendants after establishing the man's great grandson Joseph and his brothers, the sons of Jacob, the sons of Israel in Egypt, thus partially fulfilling the seed promise of the Abrahamic covenant. And the psalmist is essentially saying to the people of Israel, remember what God did for your ancestors out of his greatness and goodness in bringing them to Egypt and giving them all of these descendants. But then, of course, we know that eventually a pharaoh rises up in Egypt who did not know Joseph, and he places the people of Israel in bondage. So we see verses 25 through 45, God's continued faithfulness. Psalmist so gives second evidence now to prove why God's people should remember the Lord. This time it's the faithfulness of Yahweh to continue to fulfill the Abrahamic covenant past the life of Jacob. And again, the psalmist puts this as God remembering, see verse 42, his holy word with Abraham, his servant. And this continued fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant is explained by the psalmist as God freeing the many descendants of Abraham who had eventually come to be in bondage in Egypt. And the marvelous acts the Lord accomplished, from the plagues that convinced Pharaoh to let Israel go, to the treasures God caused Egypt to give Israel, to the guidance and provision that he provided his people in the wilderness, all led to the giving of the promised land to Israel, at least for a time. And so we have a partial fulfillment of the other two major promises of the Abrahamic covenant, and that's land and blessing. So the psalm as a whole recounts the partial fulfillment of those three major promises of the Abrahamic covenant, seed, land, and blessing. 
and and it kind of ends right there, almost abruptly. We're going to see that Psalm 106 fits very well with Psalm 105, but a couple principles we can consider from Psalm 105. One, God always remembers his word and faithfully executes the fulfillment of his promises. And for you and I as humans, remembering something involves recalling it to our finite minds. But for God, who is perfectly omniscient, remembering refers to the fact that he is always mindful of all things. It's an example of God condescending to reveal himself to mortal man by using language familiar to man. But we know that God knows all things. So when we see God being uh, spoken of as remembering, we need to remember that we got to have a high view of him still, not a low view. He doesn't remember in the sense that you and I remember and recall something to our finite minds. He remembers in the sense that he's never forgetting. He's never having to recall. It's always in the front of his mind because Isaiah 40, 13 says, who has directed the spirit of Yahweh or as his counselor has informed him. He knows all things. 1 John 3, 19 through 20, we will know by this that we are of the truth and will assure our heart before him in whatever our heart condemns us, for God is greater than our heart and knows all things. So let's be sure that God gets the glory as we consider that he remembers his word. He keeps his word, his promises faithfully in front of him, and he does indeed fulfill his promises. And the other main principle that we can see from this psalm that's directly related to what we just discussed is that the Abrahamic covenant still is in effect and will eventually be perfectly fulfilled. Remember, Israel would eventually lose the promised land and have not regained it yet. But the Abrahamic covenant is described as an everlasting covenant throughout Scripture. We see this in verse 10 of our psalm as well. And that means that one day the remnant of Israel, which will repent and trust in Jesus Christ for salvation in the last days, Romans 11 shows us this remnant, will receive the promised land forever, as well as all the blessings God promised Abraham forever. And Christians of all backgrounds are grafted in because of Christ, the ultimate seed of Abraham. Galatians 3.16 says, Now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. He does not say, and to seeds, as referring to many, but rather to one, and to your seed, that is Christ. And a few verses later, verses 26 through 27, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. The question is, have you, you yourself, personally, have you clothed yourself with Christ? Are you baptized into him? Have you died to your sinful nature and trusted in the righteousness of Jesus and his sacrificial death in your place and in his resurrection from the grave along with his return to heaven and his eventual return to the earth? And if not, this is the day. Repent and believe in Jesus. And if you do, then may we worship and praise the Lord because of his great character and actions as verses one through five say oh give thanks to yahweh call upon his name make known his deeds among the peoples sing to him sing praises to him speak of all his wonders glory in his holy name let the heart of those who seek yahweh be glad seek yahweh and his strength seek his face continually remember his wonders which he has done his marvels and the judgments uttered by his mouth and as the psalmist ended with, God's people must remember the Lord so that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise Yahweh. May this be true of you and I. This has been Psalm 105, and I hope you have a great day.